right. Hello and welcome to the gavel where we challenge and if necessary destroy media narratives. I'm Peter Lovell. I'm with George here again. And again, George, we have a whistleblower or a parent whistleblower running over to Adam Schiff and his committee. The gentleman's name is Brian Murphy and he is a former intelligence and analysis act, um, a secretary, uh, undersecretary um, at the at, uh, DHS. Um, my first reaction is, haven't we seen this movie before and don't we already know the ending? Um, my second reaction is, well, you know, Bob Woodward's book came out yesterday. Now we're going to have this one. What's going to happen by what's tomorrow or Monday? OK, I'm not. I'm not going to dispute if, if, if there is a, um, a reason for this person to blow the whistle. But unfortunately, when Adam Schiff gets involved, you tend to know the plot. And, and my attitude is when I first came across the story is that, you know, it's, this is like the dog, um, uh, you know, who cried the, the dog the dog wolf. Cried. Yeah. And it's over and over again. It seems to be very well uh, calculated in time what we're like some, some 60 days out from the election. So um, I, I know you came across the story. What's your reaction? Well, first of all, as with the previous uh, whistleblower uh, story, um, this guy's not a whistleblower by any understanding. I mean, a whistleblower is supposed to uh, blow the whistle on government uh, waste, fraud, uh, abuse and mismanagement. Uh, it's not supposed to be about disagreement over policy. And this is what this is, seems to be about, you know, just as in the previous case of the Ukraine gate case. Again, it was a disagreement over policy. Um, this uh, Brian Murphy uh, didn't like um, what the uh, Department of Homeland Security was doing on, on Russia. He thought that, oh, they should be emphasizing and in, on investigating uh, what the Russians are up to. Uh, but instead, he was told to investigate what the Chinese and the Iranians are up to. Well, that, that's the policy that was set by the DHS. If maybe it was the policy, you know, whether it's a right policy or wrong policy, that's the policy. They were tasked to do this by the president. The president runs for office. You know, he's the, the only office holder in the United States who actually runs for national office. Uh, he won an election, he gets to set policy. The De Vindmans, and now the Murphys, don't get to set policy, and yet they, still, they seem to be under the illusion that it's all about them. You know, if you don't agree with what DHS policy is, you resign. You don't get to, <laughs> to say, oh, well, I, I really don't agree. I think we should have emphasized Russia. Okay, I mean, that, that's your perspective. You know, write, you know, resign, you know, write a book about it. Go to a think tank, okay? Yes. Yeah. Write an anti-Trump book, okay? There, you have yeah. options here. I mean, what, what this is all tells me, and it's something that I remember saying on Crosstalk um, uh, uh, when we first heard of the, well, the, the very beginnings of this concocted Russiagate hoax, is that the more people pursue this, the more they will damage and maybe even destroy institutions. And the precedent that we have seen, particularly under the Trump administration of of how uh, whistleblowers are defined and treated. Um, what, why shouldn't we believe that this is going to continue in the future? I mean, this is very um, Byzantine. All of this here is that you know the you have the permanent bureaucracy. They're supposed to implement policy. They're not supposed to make it. And now this we're, 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 repeatedly we're we're getting this precedent set. And of course, with Congress going along with it, egging it on, as a matter of fact. Um, it, the, the, any chief executive now of the United States is going to have to look behind his or her back. Um, and, 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 and Trump is, from the very beginning, he has been sabotaged by people around him. And, and he's partly to blame for it because he's a, a, appointed some really a, a, abhorrent people. Okay, But it, it, the way the media treats this and the way people like Adam Schiff treats this, this is normalizing a um, bastardized, definition of whistleblowing. Yes, exactly. Uh, and what Schiff and Pelosi are really signaling here is we are going to continue to do this. If Trump is uh, re-elected, we will be impeaching him 
uh, probably sometime before January the 20th um, on the next set of charges. Um, and, and because we have a new whistleblower and we may lose again, but we're just going to keep doing it. We're just going to make government uh, impossible. And, you know, the last impeachment was, you know, no one really emphasizes that this was extremely damaging to the United States. This was at the time of the uh, COVID was <laughs> spiraling <laughs> upwards. Um, and the entire uh, entirety of the U.S. government was preoccupied with this absolute nonsense as to whether when Trump uh, decided to uh, uh, stop the uh, arms sales to uh, Ukraine and when he decided then to renew the, uh, the arms transfers, who cares? And meantime, <laughs> COVID was you know, busily flourishing away. And of course, now the Democrats, these same Democrats, are you know, pointing the finger at Trump you know, you know, is, is responsible for, for the deaths from the virus. Uh, but they on, on the cross you, yeah. when this was good, when this all started, I, I, I had some guests on some people, um, Democrats, and um, uh, I, I started my line of questioning. I said, you know, I, I, I know the history of Watergate really well. I guess I date myself, but I know all of the characters and remember it very well. And I remember the entire um, impeachment um, uh, proceedings with the articles of impeachment. And I actually played hooky from school uh, just to watch it because I was very young at the time, but I knew this was important. And so I went to my Democratic guest and I said, can you explain to me what this impeachment is all about? Because I don't understand it. OK, what's going on? And and it, because of collusion, I said, that's it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. You have operatives from the DNC talking to Ukrainian officials. That looks like collusion to me. Okay. And, yeah. and, and, yes. and, 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 you know, well, maybe there was there, there was a, a single government that meddled in our politics. It was the UK government. So can you. And, oh, of course, she just lost it. OK. But I mean, um, again, going back, I'm glad you mentioned impeachment because this is damaging to the institutions. I mean, if you read the Federalist Papers, this is an extreme remedy and it should not be political. It should not be right. political. And it's, right. it, it's, right. it's worth revisiting the, the Federalist right. Papers on that because what we have here, and I just don't want to, you know, constantly dump on the Democrats. Fine. I, I don't like the Republicans either. So let's be clear here. But in, in this political environment, it's it's the Democrats that are severely damaging institutions. And they're very difficult to repair, George, because why repair something you don't have any confidence in? Uh, that's right. Um, and, and the Constitution is, is clear. I mean, it says about... Um, uh, I think it was a bri corruption, bribery, and high crimes and misdemeanors. Uh, so it's very specific. So what the Democrats did back um, earlier this year when they started talking about abuse of power, abuse of power <laughs> is not regarded as um, meritorious for uh, impeachment. So they just, they just, even that, they kind of made, made it up as they, <laughs> they went along. So, uh, but they can keep doing this. And in a way, this is why the Democrats are, are playing this, uh, being like a, a spoiled child. We don't get what we want. We don't win this election. We're just going to keep doing this, and we're going to just ram this repeatedly down uh, Trump's throat, uh, just to show and we'll show the country that, yeah, next time, bloody well, vote the right way um, if you actually yeah. want some serious government. But when you, but, but with the, the the erosion of these institutions. And traditions, I would say, is that the the what is the, the the group? There's a group of people that are demonized just as much as the sitting president, and it's his supporters. I can't remember in my lifetime. I mean, I can I can remember the 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 uh, vitriol against Nixon and against Reagan. I remember it very clearly. But people didn't blame the voters. Okay, now well, they do. It's the voters' fault. Okay, I mean, what, what's her name, Kathy Kerr, or something like that, over at NBC? I remember it was before impeachment, and uh, a poll came out, and and Tr Trump had like ninety percent of his base on his side, and you could. And this was live television. You say, well, what's wrong with people? These people. Why don't they understand? I mean, th th that interview was it was encapsulated the cultural divide. It's just it's not ideas. It's just you're bad people. You're uneducated. You you're not um, certified. You don't have the credentials. And you should just stop, shut up, and do as your betters tell you. That's right. That's it. That's right. 
Uh, it's also a reflection of just what a bad job uh, the Democrats had done with the impeachment, which is that they hadn't persuaded anybody that uh, Trump had done anything that uh, deserved impeachment. No, nobody, not one person you know, you know, who, who, who was on the other side was persuaded by the Democrats' argument. I'm pretty. I'm sure you saw at least part of the hearings that uh, when the, uh, Attorney General Barr uh, went in front of uh, uh, Congress, and I watched almost all of the proceedings. And I really wish all voters could see all of it or watch portions of it. And you would never vote for the Democrats because they were such whiny brats, okay, and so dis discourteous and so rude. And I remember Barr said, this is, a, I thought this was a hearing and I want to be heard. <laughs> so, so they would give these mini speeches uh, and the moment, you know, Barr would attempt to answer uh, the charges because they weren't really questioned, there were charges. Ah, well, there was a phrase they used, something like, uh, my time or, or something, something like that. Uh, You're intruding on my time or there was some, some phrase that they all used. I mean, obviously it had been rehearsed with Nancy Pelosi beforehand, because they all use that same expression. So what, what, what was this? This is just simply every, every single Democrat just got to rant at the attorney general. I mean, this wasn't the hearing. I mean, it's, and, not, it's and, not and, what's supposed to happen. Kind of sum up everything. I mean, we, we started out with this Brian uh, Murphy. But see, the, the recognition of him as a whistleblower, as you quite correctly pointed out, is not whistleblowing and we've been able in the in this very short video here to show how this pattern is just destroying institutions as we go along and ultimately what it does is it hurts the 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 process the 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 entire procedure of of democracy because who wants to buy into this i don't care what your political feelings are if this is how people are going to do degrade institutions in the name of power, then we're in a really bad place. All right, let's leave it at that, George, okay? okay. You've been watching The Gaggle. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I promise you much more ahead.